In this lesson, we're going to look at the first three of the dockable tools which are located in the Windows menu. We're going to look at we're going to look at the bookmarks window, the bytes window, and the checksum generator window. Now, before we get down to doing analysis, we still need to look at some more of the user interface. Specifically, let's look at the windows here. The windows are a bunch of tools that you can dock into your interface. Why they're a separate tools window, I don't know, because there's not anything in here really, except for um, some things that are already in the windows menu drop down. So I'm not sure why that is. That's kind of weird, but most of the tools are in this windows menu bar. So the first one I want to look at is the bookmarks. If you click on bookmarks, you'll see a bookmark tab pop up. Now a bookmark is exactly what you think it is. It's just basically a shortcut or a bookmark to your analysis, to various places in your analysis. For example, if you're looking at a big binary, this one's a tiny binary, but let's say you are looking at whatever this is here. This is actually part of the ELF header. But let's say you're interested in this memory address in this instruction. It's not actually an instruction, but whatever it is here in memory. Well, you could set a bookmark to that. Okay. You could you could right click and choose bookmark or shortcut is control and D. And then you can give it a category. There are no categories defined by default, so you give it something like random category. I don't know, I'm just making that up. And then a description. This is some interesting bytes that I want to keep an eye on. I, I, again, I'm just making these up. And you click OK and you see it's a bookmark down here. You have a type, uh, category that you made up, a description, and the location. And now let's scroll down somewhere else, and we'll just go down here. Let's go to our look at using a program tree. We'll scroll down to the text area, which is where the main program code is. And here, I call the libc main, start main. Let's just create a bookmark here again. I can right click on it, or I can hit Control D. I'll do, in this case, I'll right click on it this time and choose bookmark. And again, now that we have a category, we can actually put a new category in or choose one of the drop downs. And we'll put just some note here. This is a strange call. It's actually not a strange call. I'm just, you know, I don't know what to put there. So click on that, and there we go. Now, using the bookmarks, I can go to one of the, the previous bookmarks I did and click on it, and it takes me right to there. Okay? If I click on this one, it takes me back. So you see how it's, it's doing that? And this is very useful because sometimes often when you're looking at something you'll you'll find a whole bunch of things you're interested in look at and you'll forget about them but you you, you want to, to keep note of them for later maybe you find something interesting you don't know what it is and you're saying hmm this is this is cool I want to I keep an eye on this I don't know what it is right now but I don't want to forget about it so bookmarks are cool and then you can actually do some cool things with the bookmarks you can export the bookmarks right click and choose export and you can export it to a CSV file a text file that's comma separated values or you could um, choose if export columns to CSV, which is it's the same thing, but lets you choose which columns you want to have exported. So, for example, if I didn't want to have, I only wanted to have, let's say, the category and the label, I could go ahead and unclick everything else. And I would click OK. And then it would ask me where I want to save it. And I just save it as test. And, and I can open it here. Now that's on my desktop as a file. Oh, here it is, open with, and choose just WordPad, and you can see it's just a comma separated values. Okay. So, that's your bookmarks. The next tool I want to look at is the Bytes tool. This is simply a hex viewer or hex editor too. As you click over here in your listing window, you can see that the cursor in the bytes window changes. 
and you can see the actual hexadecimal byte values, which is very useful. What's more, you can add columns to this by clicking this little wrench. If you click on the wrench, you can change the, the options, how many bytes per line and groupings, but one of the interesting things is you might want to add ASCII to that. So it shows you next to the hex values, the ASCII values. This is a lot like a lot of hex viewers do. Uh, you may want to add maybe the binary representation. You could do that. So it lets you add the address, binary representation, hex representation, integer representation, ASCII representation, disassembled representation, hex integer representation, or octal. Honestly, I think really hex and maybe once in a while binary are the only, I'm sorry, um, hex and ASCII are the, really the, the useful things. So that's very cool. What's more, you can click on this one here, and if you uh, click it down, you can actually edit the, the bytes. So I could do, say I wanted to add, change that, that E to an F. Uh, by default, it's going to be unclicked, so you can't actually change any values. When you try to edit it, it does not let you. And there you go, you can edit the file that way. And that's all that really is to the, the bytes window. It's very simple, very straightforward. And you, it, this is a tool that you may want to use once in a while. It's not something you're going to have up all the time, but sometimes when you're looking at data or even instructions, it helps to actually see the byte representation. And I'll explain more about why I'd want to see the byte representation as we go through later on in later lessons when we talk about the disassembly. But that's about all there is to the bytes window. So the next window we're going to look at is the checksum window. And again, we just go to the window menu, checksum generator. And this is what you think it is. It generates checksums. By default, it's going to do a checksum when you click on the refresh button of the whole file. And you can see the different checksums here. One other really cool feature is if you want to just checksums of a certain thing part, like this elf header, we could highlight that come back to the checksum generator and now a new tab when we highlight an area appears and this tab right here when it's pressed down it does a checksum of just the selected area so if it's pressed up it's the whole file if it's pressed down we'll do a checksum of just this byte here and now that it's pressed down it's you see it's just the selection you can tell what that is checksum 8 the byte is uh, 1, so that is what the, the, the value would be for checksum 8. Now, in 32 and 16. Now, some other things you can do here, you should probably click this down. This sets the, the checksums to be in hex values rather than decimal values. And most things that you see are going to be hex values. You can also do this, which will do it's called a ones complement. Basically, it's going to reverse the bytes that you have. It's going to flip them and then do a checksum on that. So if I do a uh, a flip on uh, ones complement on one zero, it's going to turn into F E F E I believe. So let's try it. Yeah, and it does F E. So that's a ones complement. This is a twos complement, which actually takes all the bits, flips them, and then adds one. Okay, and that would be F F. That's a really useful feature. Sometimes you'll want to take a checksum of a whole binary or just a part of a binary. So that's the checksum generator. Does your organization need instructor-led training in advanced technical topics? Paladin Group can provide that. Check out our webpage.